Hello mathematicians, in this video we will introduce variance and standard deviation. So today in Minneapolis it is snowing and it's the first snow of the fall slash winter. So suppose you have a tradition that on the first day of snow you go out and buy donuts. The number of donuts that you buy can be described by random variable x which has this probability distribution down here. With probability 0.1 you buy one donut. With probability 1 half, you buy two donuts. With probability 0.2, you buy three donuts. And with probability 0.2, you buy four donuts. So in a previous video, we talked about the expected value for the number of donuts that you buy. And we can calculate that by just taking each one of these values, 1, 2, 3, 4, and multiplying it by its associated probability. So 1 times 0.1, 2 times 0.5, 3 times 0.2, 4 times 0.2 and adding all those up. So 1 times the probability x equals 1, plus 2 times the probability x equals 2, and so on. So then we end up with an expected value of 2.5 donuts. So in other words, if we did this snow nut tradition year after year and continued with this same probability distribution, the long run average number of donuts that you buy and eat is 2.5. OK, now imagine that your friend Maria has a similar snow nut tradition, but her probability distribution is a little bit different. So with probability 0.2, she buys one donut. With probability 0.4, she buys two donuts. With probability 0.1, she buys three donuts. And with probability 0.3, she buys four donuts. Now, the expected number of donuts that you buy and that she buys is identical. Both of those are two and a half, which you can check on your own. So. We know that these are different. Let's look at one different measure. Let's look at variance. So whose snow nut tradition is more variable? And how do we even measure this variability? We'll do this with variance. So what is variance? So supp uh, suppose that we have a random variable, x that has expected value mu, and x has the probability distribution shown here. It takes on values x1 through xn, with associated probabilities p1 through pn. Then we can calculate the variance of x as p1 times the square of x1 minus mu plus p2 times the square of x2 minus mu, and so on. OK, so let's do an example to solidify that. Um, using our snow nut donut distribution, the variance of x for you is, let's go get this distribution here so that we can see it. OK, so p1, let's use our first probability, which is 0.1. We plug that in here. x1 is 1, and we found that the expected value mu is 2.5. So for every mu that we see here, let's plug in 2.5. For each one of these probabilities, p1, p2, through pn, we'll take 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. And then x1 is 1, x2 is 2, x3 is 3, x4 is 4. p1 is 0.1, p2 is 0.5, p3 is 0.2, and p4 is 0.2. So we go ahead and crunch that, and we get 0.85 as the variance for x. Now let's do the same thing for Maria's donuts. So here is her probability distribution. We'll have a similar setup. Her mean is still 2.5, so we can have mu equals 2.5 for each one of these. And the values that y takes on is still 1, 2, 3, 4, so we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. All that we're changing now is the probabilities. So she buys one donut with probability 0.2. So we have one here and 0.2 here. She buys two probabilities with 0.4, or she buys two donuts with probability 0.4. So here's the 0.4 and here's two. And when we go ahead and crunch that, we get 1.25 as the variance. So the variance for your number of donuts bought is 0.85. The variance for her number of donuts bought is 1.25. So we see that Maria's donut 
um, consumption is more variable than your donut consumption. And this makes sense because if we look at these two distributions, here's yours, here's Maria's, you have more um, probability packed into the center and she has slightly more packed onto one donut and four donuts onto the two extremes. So it makes sense that her variance is higher because she has more variability in the number of donuts that she consumes. And if we made this really extreme, let's say that she is another person maybe, either buys one donut or four donuts then this person would have an even higher variance because they are more on, out on the extremes. Okay, so that's variance for you. Measures the variability of your random variable. A weird thing about variance is the units. So in our donut example, our units would be donuts squared for the variance. And that is just a pretty weird concept. Um, it makes a lot more sense to speak in terms of just plain old donuts. So what we can do is use standard deviation instead of variance. And that's convenient because all we have to do is take the square root of variance to get standard deviation. So standard deviation equals the square root of variance. Another way that we can write this is standard deviation squared equals variance. So if we want to look at the um, standard deviation for x and y, we could do um, 0.85 to the 0.5, which is 0.922. And then the standard deviation is 1.25 to the 0.5, which is 1.118. So there we have our standard deviation for your donut consumption on snow nut day, which is 0.922. And the standard deviation for Maria's donut consumption on snow nut day is 1.118. All right, so that is standard deviation and variance for you. Remember, if you have variance, just take the square root to get standard deviation.